and welcome to the midweek service at St George's Tron. Uh, my name is Clark Muir. Um, I'm a trainee minister with the Church of Scotland based at St George's Tron at the moment and I'm delighted um, <coughs> to be able to bring the midweek service to you and continue our study through Nehemiah. Um, if you've been journeying with us uh, throughout the study, you'll be aware that the, the theme is in relation to returning and rebuilding. Um, the, the, the background um, to the study is that the people of Israel have returned um, from exile in, in waves and in phases and have faced the challenges of rebuilding um, and, and uh, rebuilding the altar, rebuilding the temple and now we've begun to look at the walls being rebuilt and the challenges around that. So um, we've learned lots, we've, we've, there's been lots of truths and principles that have been helpful for us as we think about going forward um, and progressing from the restrictions and lockdowns and everything that has impacted upon our Christian community. Um, so uh, we, we continue to do that. Um, I will be reading today from Nehemiah chapter 4 verses 15 to 23. Um, but uh, just before we go to that, let's just let's just um, have a moment in prayer. Thank you, God, for this time together today. Thank you, Lord, for all we learn from your word. Thank you for your covenant, your grace, and every good thing, every blessing that's in our lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for <clears throat> this time together, and that we are uh, still able to join. Lord, even though we can't be together physically. Lord, thank you for um, just our, our community and um, we look forward to uh, restrictions easing. Lord, we thank you for your blessing and your influence on our return to church, Lord. Um, so, Father, we just, uh, we just give you this time, we just commit to you, Lord. We ask that you be exalted in our lives, Lord, and um, we come together and pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> so, um, I will pick up from Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 15 to 23. Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 15 to 23. May God bless his word to our understanding. And it happened, when our enemies heard that it was known to us, and that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. So it was from that time on that half of my servants worked at construction, while the other half held the spears, the shields, the bows, and wore armour, and the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. Those, those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction and with the other held a weapon. Every one of the builders had his sword girded at his side as he built, and the one who sounded the trumpet was beside me. Then I said to the nobles, the rulers and the rest of the people, the work is great and extensive, and we are separated far from one another on the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. So we laboured in the work, and half of the men held the spears from daybreak until the stars appeared. At the same time, I also said to the people, let each man and his servant stay at, Jerus stay at night in Jerusalem, that they may be our guard by night and a working party by day. So neither I, my brethren, my servants, nor the men of the guard who followed me, took off our clothes, except that everyone took them off for washing. 
Amen. So, the work on the walls uh, has begun, but inevitably, um, as soon as, as that begins, um, there is a threat and an attack um, on the project and the work of God. Um, and it's something that we see um, happening to the church throughout Scripture, um, and we're all aware of it in our own lives at, a, at an individual level of persecution because of dark forces which seek to um, thwart our progress in Christ and our, and our Christian walk. And here it's um, happening to the project of rebuilding the walls. Now, um, in this passage, um, I noticed, of course, um, the purpose of God and his promises within that. Um, that in verse 15 that God had brought their plot to nothing. So this threat and this effort from Sanballat, Tobiah and Gasham was brought to nothing. And it's, it's just a reminder and another example here that um, God's work um, cannot be thwarted. Um, we, we, we know in Matthew 16 verse 18, Jesus said he would build his church and the gates of hell would not and prevail against it. Um, we uh, another similar promise or principle is in Isaiah fifty four seventeen. Um, and God's word tells us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So these um, are really really powerful truths about God's purposes, um, and nothing can stop um, God's progress uh, at, at this level and at an individual level. Um, we're aware that there are um, political forces um, that would criticise the church and are perhaps gaining ground um, right across the world. And we could almost attach Sanballat, Tobiah and Gashan's name to, to some of these political parties. It's the same spirit which um, seems to uh, dwell within them. So, but we know there's nothing new under the sun. And we know in 2 Timothy um, 3 verse 12 that all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. It's, it's, a, it's a spiritual truth. But we are to be encouraged because of God's protection in and through uh, persecution and threat when it comes. We expect it, but we can um, rest in God and know his protection. Um, many of us will be familiar with the promise in Romans 8 verse 28 that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And there it is again, the purpose of God if we are walking with God um, and, and, and staying in a relationship with God, um, we experience the purpose of God in our lives and we can be sure that all things work together for good. Um, my my own uh, testimony and journey towards ministry um, <clears throat> um, is, is just been a, a, another example of how the purpose of God can can just open up. And um, there was a, a, a time when uh, I, I considered applying for ministry, but it, it just didn't seem. Um, practically possible at that time. And in the past few years, um, when I've felt God's call um, press and increase in my life, the circumstances and the resources and how they've just, how God has just provided and how my circumstances have just opened up for me to begin to train um, for ministry it has been nothing short of incredible. Um, God's provision, God's purpose, um, it, it, it's 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 all been uh, it's all been incredible in fact. So um, we see God's purpose here, and we also see the people of God in this in this uh, portion of Scripture. We see how they prioritise God's worship. Um, we if we, if we go back a bit, um, we we'll rem we remember that um, the altar was the first thing to be built by Zerubbabel. 
Um, and again, we just saw the worship of God being prioritised there. It was the altar first and subsequently the temple and, and of course now the walls. But again, there's just a lesson here about prioritising God's worship in our lives. Um, so Nehemiah's priority is to get the walls built. And that's clearly about guarding the worship place. Um, and we know that God is enthroned in our hearts, but in this story, we see um, the temple, um, the, the temple being rebuilt, and of course the walls to protect that. And there's something very significant in that, I believe, for for us as Christians at an individual level to guard what we've got. Um, as I say, God is enthroned in our lives. But it's so easy to give that place to a stranger. Um, some of you who know me know about um, my own testimony and and being led astray or giving place to a stranger in my life. And that stranger was, of course, alcohol. Um, and there's so many attractions and distractions that can take priority over the place of worship. But everyone returned to the wall um, in spite of the threat and it was all hands on deck and um what, what was what was wonderful here what, what what i noticed here was that um everyone's contribution to the rebuild was on a voluntary basis and not statutory everyone is given of themselves and given of their time and it just looks like a wonderful picture of the church Someone once said, if you're too busy to help out at your local church, then perhaps you're too busy. Um, possibly a truth, and or certainly a truth in that for us all. Um, the scripture also shows us um, the protection of God. And you know, everyone here is clearly prepared to take a stand um, and, and, and protect the people of God. There's a wonderful picture um, of, of neighbours um, literally um, covering their neighbours back whilst um, the work is, is carried out. Um, we see people probably stooping, bending down to, to build and they would have their back to the threat, but um, the, their neighbours literally had their back. Um, and I'm mindful of the scripture in Proverbs 18.24, there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Um, and that's the picture here of the church. We've got um, the Israelites looking out for each other and literally risking their lives for their neighbour in order for um, the work to continue. And there's just a, a great picture there as well of um, our brothers and sisters or our neighbours here in this context looking out for us and we need that. Um, we, we certainly need that at times. Sometimes it takes a brother or a sister to make us aware of something in our lives or um, in, in order for us to address it. And, and it's it's there that we learn that the wounds of a friend are faithful. So there's some um, great truths and, and principles um, here as 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 the the, the wall is being rebuilt. Um, what's also wonderful is um, that the protection of God here um, is in human form. As, as the neighbours, it's, it's, the, it's the people who, who, who live next door who are actually providing the, the, the protection. So I think sometimes people can look for um, spiritual sensation in some ways um, and, 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 you know, the miraculous power of God, when in actual fact, um, God's uh, protection and his supernatural provision is actually provided in human form. It's 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 something your your brother or your sister or, or uh, has given to you. 
or has said to you or has done for you. Um, God provides in this way, there's no doubt about it. Um, I'd like to tell you a, a, a story, a, a, an incredible example of this from back in 1978 um, when a wee boy was uh, hoping to get a Skeletrix racing set for for Christmas. Now my mother at that time, she, she was a young Christian and we were really um, we were really struggling financially and what I didn't know was that um, she didn't have the funds for uh, for the Skeletrix set and on Christmas Eve um, there was still no prospect or possibility of, of that happening. So um, later that day um, the Baptist minister lived across um, across the street and he visited my mum with an envelope and within that envelope was £50. That was in 1978, so that was a significant provision back then. He provided an envelope with £50 in it from an anonymous source. Um, now that person was never known to my mum, but it's just a, a wonderful example of God's provision in our lives through people. Um, so we, we, we see here uh, that's that's exactly what God's doing. The people are being protected um, by each other, um, and it's a, a really encouraging um, example and illustration of our responsibilities towards each other. So um, let's remember God has His purpose that can't be thwarted. Um, that we are His people, and He provides us. Um, with his protection. Thank you, Lord. Let's just let's just pray for a moment. Thank you, Lord, for this word and these truths, Lord, for your protection, your provision, your purpose in our lives, Lord. Um, we seek, Lord, to to rebuild and return to church, Lord, as soon as is safe and it's practically possible, Lord. We look forward. To your leading as we as we do that lord thank you for this day and your goodness again in our lives father and for the truths and principles um, which we see in this wonderful um, portion of scripture thank you lord um, we can believe that your church um, will not be thwarted, Lord, and whilst we suffer times of, of persecution, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the protection um, that, that, that you give us. Father, thank you for um, all your goodness, Lord, and um, we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Just um, before we uh, close the service, um, I I'd like to just bring this, this song. Um, it's blessed me for many years. Um, and let's pray it blesses the Lord today. Amen. Jesus, just the mention of your name. Flowers grow and the desert blooms again. Like fire in winter cold, like pure and precious gold. Jesus, just the mention of your name. It's like a lighthouse to a sailor in the midst of a storm.
like a harbor to a ship that's battered, bruised, and torn. It's like bread to a hungry heart. Fresh streams to a soul that's parched. Jesus, just the mention of your name. Amen. Bless the Lord. So, um, thanks for thanks for listening and joining with me, and um, I hope to see you. Hope to see you all soon. Bye for now.